Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and I've got some great news to the Unity developers amongst us. You have some new toys to play with. Yes, there has been a new release of the Unity game engine. It's a beta release and to be honest, the beta releases are actually kind of the most fun because they're the ones that get the new stuff. This new stuff that you can't use in production, probably won't be able to use in production for like three or four years, but new shiny stuff. So that's what we're dealing with today. We've got Unity 2020.1 beta. 2021.1 beta. Sorry, I said that wrong. And we'll get into some of the details about it. But first, let's go just take a quick look at it. Now, you're going to find, in all honesty, uh, it looks a lot like Unity. <laughs> it's very uh, Unity-esque. And there's a reason for that is because, quite frankly, there's not a whole lot of changes. UI has stayed pretty static. And a lot of the things that are new, the things that are added in this release, such as the visual scripting, they are being added via package manager. So a lot of these things are becoming more and more modular and you add them in as you need them. Now, the one thing that we're looking at right here, the marquee new feature here is this visual scripting. You'll see here main camera, I went ahead and I added a script machine to it. So it's a, a new component type down here, visual scripting. And you'll see you've got script machine, state machines and variables. I added a new script machine here. Uh, the controller window is available over there, but let's just go take a look at it right here. Let's maximize that thing. Here you go. This is the script graph. If you ever use blueprints, you know what you're dealing with. Like so, drop out, there is a new node to work with. So I've got our camera. Ah, we could do some transforms on it. We could say, yeah, look at, boom. So you kind of just drag and flow chart graph out these things. So this is going to happen at the start. Whereas down here, we have the update event. This is the heart of your game loop. It's going to be called every single uh, frame. So for example, we could do something like get the game object here and... Uh, Actually, probably wanted to go back and do the transform. So we could do something here like transform. Uh, we could scale or translate. Let's do a translate. So we could do a translate uh, direction or transform direction. And you can just kind of keep moving. So there, our camera is going to move one in the X direction every single update frame. So if this doesn't look at all familiar to you, you have never used Bolt before. So what they're calling here visual scripting, this is Bolt. Now, if you're waiting for Dots visual scripting, yeah, so is everyone else. When I first read about this, I thought, oh, awesome. Dots visual scripting preview is finally here. And I'm starting to think, and this is a conspiracy here, but I don't know if it's a real product anymore. I don't know what's happening with dots, to be honest. We seem to be getting a lot more stuff built around the idea of game objects and the traditional model behavior way of doing things. I don't know. It just kind of seems like the future may not be so dotsy. I imagine that stuff is all still being done. But the new visual scripting that we are looking at in this version of Unity, well, it's Bolt. But Bolt is directly integrated now. So let's go drop, take a look back at the release notes. So uh, Unity 2020.1 and 2020.2 included many improvements to existing functionality that make Unity workflows even more intuitive to boost your product productivity. With the 2020.1 beta, we're building on this foundation while also introducing uh, the first iteration of the new key features announced in the 2020 roadmap blog post. Some of the highlights are, and we're going to jump in and take a look at them one by one. So first one we started with was visual scripting. Yes, this was bolts. Now it is not bolts. It's now visual scripting included in the package manager. It was included by default for me. So it's integrated uh, as a core Unity capability, uh, now available as a package, um, can be revealed in the package manager by enabling pre-release packages during the beta, and workflow optimizations and integrations. Visual workflow has been optimized to maximize productivity. Graph editor, Blackboard, and Graph inspector have been consolidated into a single window, and units are generated automatically the first time the graph window is opened. Ahead of time, pre-compilation is automatic. Um, also, visual scripting now provides dedicated support for the new input system. By the way, and you may run into this as well, when I first opened my graph, like edit graph here, I got this window and I was very confused. I'm like, where the hell is my graph? And I don't know why. This is the default. What you want to do is come in here and resize this window so you can actually see the graph. I, I don't know why that is the default behavior. Just one of those things to run into if you want to check it out. So that is the new visual scripting integration. Uh, next up, we have improvements to graphics. So continuing to mature the ERP and the HDRP, so the universal render pipeline, that is for mobile games and constrained machines, or the high-def render pipeline, that is more for the AAA market there or consoles. Uh, alongside authoring tools like Shader Graph or Terrain, in 2020.1, graphics R&D team is focused on stability and bug fixes. In all honesty, They've been adding features for years to Unity that never actually make it to live. I do appreciate a focus on bug fixing, so that is a good thing. Uh, so we've got point light shadows now supported in the ERP. Uh, the ERP uh, for AR and VR projects it includes significant improvements such as better 
ERP XR automation to support per feature level XR testing, enhanced overall XR stability in ERP. Uh, we've also refined the ERP camera inspector when running in XR. XR, of course, being the overload, like the, the over encompassing title for AR and VR titles. Uh, static shadow caster for HDRP lets you cache only a portion of non-directional shadow maps. Uh, SRP to core uh, with the release of the 2020.1 graphics packages are being relocated to the core of Unity. This move will simplify the experience of working with U new Unity graphics features as well as ensuring that your projects are always running on the latest verified graphics code. For each release of Unity Alpha Beta Tech Stream, the graphics code is embedded within the main Unity installer. So when you install the latest release of Unity, you will be getting the most recent versions of the ERP HDRP shader graph and VFX. Thank goodness. Now this is going to probably get away from some of the package hell uh, that's been happening with Unity more and more recently. Or when you first load a project, you get all kinds of purple crap because all the shaders broke. And then you got to close it down and start it back up because it had to resolve all the dependencies and so on. It sounds like this is going to be out of the box. That is is smart. All right, now we're going to move on. Editor. Improvements to the editors include uh, implemented several optimizations to achieve faster texture imports, including up to 2.7 times faster texture compression. Editor usability improvements. In this release, we added a new search field in the gizmos window, a clear on recompile option in the console window, cleaner organization for the transform component context menu, and a new confirmation pop-up when dragging assets into the project view. And meshfilter.mesh property is now animatable. And um, that, word, that word looks really wrong. Anyways, uh, scripting and profiling IL to CPP, the intermediate language to CPP native compiler, uh, reduces existing IL to CPP and C++ compilation times. Faster is always better, well, except for when it breaks something. Uh, C Sharp script compilation, both in editor and player built compilations are now being performed on an um, incremental basis to reduce wait times. Visual Studio uh, integrated Integration support within Unity Editor was moved to a package in 2019.2, but the built-in integration was retained. Uh, in 2020.1, this integration was removed, so it's going to be entirely package-based. Unity Linker changes um, changes improved method body stripping detection of C-sharp reflection and delegate stripping, all to reduce the amount of time IL to CPP takes. Uh, Precision Time API, a new time API, double.time as double, um, introduces a number of as double properties and allows developers to use double precision time in their projects. That's actually kind of nice. Code coverage is a pre-release package aiming for release status within this release cycle. Uh, that Hopefully that means 2020.1 uh, beta, uh, sorry, final release should have this in it. Uh, latest version includes some new features and improvements, including path filtering, which allows you to specify folders and files to uh, include or exclude in your coverage report. A profiler uh, updates provide the ability to profile multiple players and servers all running on one machine to test multiplayer experiences, as well as letting the developers specify the player instance to which the profile should attach. Next up, improvements in scripting. We got more IL2 CPP. All right, what was the last category? Scripting. Oh, okay, yeah, I opened that twice. Eh, we'll go back to that. that. That seemed confusing. Uh, Artist Tools Pro Builder, Pro Builder V5 package brings uh, tools to improve usability uh, for level designers and gray boxing workflows. The new uh, version features point to point cut tool, which allows you to cut on the faces of a Pro Builder mesh to create subdivisions of the original face in different sub faces. Now, by the way, Pro Builder, if you've never seen it, is basically a simple model tool built inside of Unity. It used to be available as a plugin. They actually acquired it and made it available for free. It's funny, these white boxing tools and models tools are coming to all the game engines. I did a video on uh, the new ones that were just released in Unreal Engine. Uh, the Lumberyard game engine recently got a tool along these lines, and they're nice. If you're doing level prototyping, uh, they're great tools to work with. So it looks like Pro Builder 5 just got some love. Uh, we got some new 2D tools, including a sprite editor slicing. Options now allow you to slice sprite sheets that contain continuous neighboring isometric tiles. This helps to speed up the process of preparing isometric tile maps if your art is done in one single image. Performance for slicing into a larger number of textures was also improved. Hey, look, shout out to Kenny. Kenny's assets are featured here as well. And here you can see them kind of in action right here. Oh, there's more. Uh, tiles and tile maps. Uh, this release includes several fixes and usability improvements to tile maps and the tile palette. Uh, you can toggle the visibility of the grid gizmo from the tile palette and from the scene view in the gizmos menu. Uh, flood fill functionality has the option to paint over continuous tiles and dynamic batching for tile maps. Uh, sprite editor functionality now has moved to the 2D sprite package. A built-in 2D tile map package is also available in the package manager. 2D renderer now supports material property base map used in the ERP, making sprite 
sprite renderer, tile map renderer, and sprite renderer directly set the diffuse texture from shaders made in the ERP or with shader graph. Camera sorting uh, layer textures in 2D renderer. Sprite post postress is now faster with less memory. And sprite swap, this workflow is now part of the general sprite workflow. And not just for skinning with Sprite Editor for 2D animations, 2D animation package now includes a centralized Sprite library, which includes all the potential customization that their characters, props, or other visual assets could require at any given moment. Uh, 2D Sprite Shape, new, new tessellation method, method that was developed based on the community feedback, offers better performance by using jobs to avoid jar garbage collection, and enables you to uh, more performantly generate or modify dynamic sprite shape objects at runtime. And we've got some platform updates. The device simulator uh, previous preview package is now available as a default feature. Uh, starting with 2021.1 requires Android NDK R4, uh, uh, 21. Uh, Air Foundation bumped XR integration toolkit. Yeah, all right. And here we got the uh, new package lifestyle starting in 2020.1, changing the way we publish, show and label packages in the package manager. This new iteration is meant to provide clearer guidance regarding a package stability, anticipated support level, Unity's long-term commitment, and the expected release date. The new lifecycle is the result of many rounds of feedback with the community and should ultimately make the package manager experience better. Uh, more details there. So you've got entry point, the experimental pre-release for the pre-release version, release versions, uh, yeah, all right. So that looks like that. So that is uh, the Unity 2021.1 beta. What do you think? Anything there got you really excited? What do you think of uh, the visual script integration here? And what do you think of the fact that I think going through all of that, uh, I don't, I don't recall seeing anything about bolts, uh, about dots at all. Uh, there was a one mention about the, um, the, uh, uh, jobs compiler there for the sprite thing. Uh, but that's about it. Oh, I missed a couple of artist tool things. All right. Oh, cool. The FBX exporter uh, became a released package in 2021.1. Uh, it's nice to get your assets back out of here. Uh, also, the Unreal Alembic package allows you to import Alembic files into your scene. Uh, yeah, so that, that that's the 2020.1 release, strangely dotless. So I, I, I don't know, again. What do you think? Do, do you think that they just kind of given up on dots or the branding of dots, all of the dot stuff's just kind of going to be rolled in kind of subtly in the background? Or is it just that the whole legacy stuff and the new pipelines and so on and so forth are just getting, um, you know, the focus right now because they're focusing on stability over new features. Uh, it's interesting in a release of this size how little there was on dots because it used to be uh, dots based in burst compiler, jobs compiler, entity component system, all of that stuff dominated everything and they all required their own new set of tools. We're not really seeing that anymore, is it? Just because that's just sort of part of it now, or are they de-emphasizing? I'd love to hear your opinion. Comments down below. Also, what did you like most about this release? That's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.